If you're interested in scanning film, you've probably wondered, what's the absolute best possible quality I could get out of my scans? And what's the digital resolution of film? Today, I have a video that will hopefully help answer that question. Technically, film has no defined digital resolution, as it is a purely analog format limited only by the size of the light-sensitive chemical molecules. You could just keep getting closer and closer till you're seeing those molecules that make up the film, like in this electron microscope image, but at some point there is a practical limit. Luckily, most film manufacturers provide a data sheet that describes how much detail their film is capable of resolving. Usually there are two measurements, the lines per millimeter rating and the modulation transform function curve. The first one is easy to understand and can give you a quick idea of what your film is capable of doing, but sometimes the film's lines per millimeter rating is not included in the datasheet. Almost all Kodak color film I've found does not list this measurement, but all film datasheets should have an MTF curve. So lines per millimeter, what does this really mean? A lot of people are confused about this measurement because, well, it's confusing. Even when the data sheets of the film specifically say lines per millimeter, most of the time it really is line pairs per millimeter. This is because this lines per millimeter reading is a defined measurement that film manufacturers follow, otherwise known as the ISO 6328 definition of photographic material resolving power. These measurements are taken by using a test pattern consisting of five total black and white lines. The spatial frequency is cycles per millimeter, which is the same as line pairs per millimeter, since you have one line that is white and one that is black, thus giving you a single cycle. To get the measurement, you simply take 2.5 divided by the width of the test pattern. And since the test pattern consists of five total bars, half of that is 2.5, so it gives you the amount of line pairs per millimeter, not the amount of lines. Now in reality, this pattern will be blurred, thus resulting in something closer to a sine wave pattern, which is why the measurement used in modulation transform function curves is cycles per millimeter and not line pairs. But they essentially mean the same thing. The farther to the right the MTF curve line gets, the smaller or higher frequency the pattern becomes. The lower the line gets shows how blurred those details will be. You'll notice on this Fuji Color 200 chart that details larger than 20 cycles per millimeter have a response of above 100%. These MTF curves tell you how sharp the details of the film will be at a given size and contrast. The lines per millimeter measurement of film tells you approximately how small those details can be at a certain contrast level before becoming practically indistinguishable between each other. That's why the lines per millimeter measurements usually have two contrast measurements. So how does this translate into digital pixel resolution? Well, think of it like this. If you have two lines next to each other in a digital image, how are those gonna be represented? with at least two pixels, of course. So you could simply take the line pairs per millimeter rating of the film, multiply that by two to get the minimal number of pixels per millimeter needed to resolve that size of detail. This is also called the Nyquist rate. You need to have double the sample rate in order to resolve a frequency of a certain size. This is, of course, assuming that the detail in the image is exactly in line with the grid of pixels say the detail is offset or diagonal, then you would need more than two pixels to make up that detail because of how plotting the image onto a grid of pixels works. This is otherwise known as rasterization. Fuji Color 200, a very common color film, has a resolving power of 125 line pairs per millimeter for a high contrast test target. The more contrast a detail has, the sharper the detail will be on the film. You can see as the film reaches 125 cycles per millimeter on the MTF curve, it drops below about 20%. But since the detail in question is high enough contrast, the film will still be able to capture that detail. Film is analog, so it really doesn't stop resolving details. The details just get so soft that they're eventually indistinguishable from the noise floor. That's why manufacturers rate the film at a specific line pair count. 
Anything beyond that is going to be hardly noticeable unless it is seriously high contrast. Assuming 125 line pairs per millimeter can be resolved with a minimum of two pixels per line pair, that means you need to be able to digitize the film at a resolution of at least 250 pixels per millimeter which is 6,350 pixels per inch, or DPI, it's the same thing in this context. That would put a single frame of 35mm Fuji Color 200 at a minimal digital size of 54 megapixels. Remember, that's assuming only two pixels for the smallest detail. You could capture the film at even higher resolution to get the gradation between those smallest details, infinitely to your heart's content. And you could do so until those finest details are made up of thousands of pixels forming perfect smooth transitions, but that's nuts. For the rest of the video, I'll just be sticking with the Nyquist rate, which is two pixels per line pair to make things simple. Just remember, you can sample at any rate higher than that and you'll get technically better results. It's just like sample rate in audio. The smaller the detail, the more samples you need to accurately represent that detail. And the more samples you can get, the more accurate that detail becomes. The reality is you will likely always need more than two pixels to represent details since real photos will always contain objects that don't conform to a perfect grid of pixels. 125 line pairs per millimeter on the Fuji Color 200 is quite good. Again, that's 54 megapixels, assuming only two pixels per line pair. Fuji Superior Extra 400 is rated the exact same way, and so is Kodak Aero Color 3, the only color Kodak film I've been able to find a line pair rating for. Fuji Velvia 50 is rated at 160 line pairs, or about 88.5 megapixels. Kodak T-Max 100 is rated at 200 line pairs per millimeter, which would be about 138 megapixels. And the biggest, baddest film I could find, Adox CMS 20 Mark II, which is ISO 20 film, is rated at 800 line pairs per millimeter. And their spec sheet even says line pair per millimeter specifically. That would be, assuming only two pixels per line pair, 2,211 megapixels. Though at 16,000 pixels per millimeter, I think that would be smaller than the wavelengths of visible light. So there's probably a hard limit at some point. And here's the even crazier part. Those measurements are just for 35 millimeter film. Once you start talking about medium or large format film, it just gets exponentially higher and higher resolution from there. For example, let's say you have some 8x10 film with a resolving power of 200 line pairs per millimeter, like Tmax 100. That would be the digital equivalent, assuming two pixels per line pair, to 8 gigapixels. And this is why film is still around. It's going to take a long time before digital cameras can hit even 1,000 real megapixels. And even then, film will still exist for the artistic process of it. Cameras didn't stop people from painting pictures, and digital cameras will never stop people from doing film photography, no matter how good they get. The highest megapixel digital cameras today that people might actually own come in at around 60 megapixels. Yeah, there's a couple hundred megapixels like the Fuji and the Hasselblad, and then there's that monster Hasselblad that fakes 400 megapixels, but it costs nearly $50,000, so normal people are probably not going to be using it. Maybe the Fuji. It's cheaper than the Leica. Camera technology today is just barely matching color 35mm film's typical theoretical digital resolutions. And a lot of these high megapixel cameras try and call themselves medium format. Yeah, with barely the resolution of a 35mm frame. Now, of course, there is a big asterisk to all of this. The real resolution of your film depends on so many factors besides what the film is rated at. When you're hand holding the camera and you have shaky hands, Hands, when the mirror of your camera slams shut, or the shutter opens and closes, or the lens aperture moves, all of that induces movement and all of that blurs the image, thus resulting in less detail contrast. What about focusing mistakes? You aren't going to resolve details if they aren't in focus. Most people shooting film are using vintage, yet perfectly good film cameras that have defects or quirks and rely on manual focusing. Exposure mistakes will change the resolving power of the film too, or the age of the film, or the temperature the film was stored at and for how long. 
Using a non-solvent developer like Rodenol will give more grain and sharpness compared to a solvent developer like DDX. And even the methods for developing the film heavily contribute to how much detail is resolved. Stand developing, pushing, pulling, they're all gonna play with the detail resolving capability. And then there's optical limitations. Camera lenses can only resolve so much detail, and luckily the detail resolving power of a lens is also measured in line pairs per millimeter. Camera lenses are affected by various factors that limit their resolving capability too, but the biggest one of them is diffraction. A general rule of thumb for how many line pairs a lens will resolve is 1600 divided by the f-stop, according to this incredible book I found by Harold Merklinger. When shooting that ADOX film, assuming everything else is perfect and your lens is flawless, you have to be shooting at f2 to even resolve the 800 line pairs per millimeter it can capture. You can actually visualize the drop in detail quality due to diffraction yourself on a digital camera. Take a photo at like f2 or 4, and then take the same same photo at f22. The f22 one is going to have significantly blurrier details. More stuff will be in focus because the focal plane will be deeper, but the details will be softer. Now factoring all this stuff in, all of the little flaws and things that can affect film, is it still really higher resolution than a modern digital camera? Yeah, probably, sometimes. But is it going to make a better image or a sharper one? Probably not. With digital, you're more limited by optics and sensor size. So yeah, modern digital cameras with modern optics are gonna probably be sharper than most film setups. Digital is so good nowadays that it really makes you appreciate the art of film photography. And one last thing is that this is all assuming you're dealing with film that is being digitized. This is something that only began existing kind of recently. Before film digitization, film would be enlarged optically and traditional optical enlargement, when done properly, will always beat a print made from a digital scan or a digital image capture. I've heard that that ADOX 35mm film can be optically enlarged to 8 feet without any noticeable grain, which is absolutely insane. Optical enlargements are a whole different can of worms. It's an entire distinct field that I have really minimal knowledge of, and I'll probably, hopefully, never go down that rabbit hole, because this isn't even a photography channel, even though it might seem that way recently. Typically, I just upload clips of me playing video games, but occasionally I do post high-level art projects or technical information like this video. So if you enjoyed this, make sure you subscribe, because I'll be back next week with another epic video, or or maybe a short. I just upload whatever I want, I don't even care.